Hi, this is Dave from Free Run Speed. Today I'm going to do a test in the Hoka One One Evo Speed Goat. So, just some details. It's an engineered mesh with, uh, they, they call it Kevlar. It also has a huge number of welds on it to support the upper. It's a 32 millimeter heel, 28 millimeter forefoot, given a 4 millimeter offset which is the exact same as the Speed Goat 4. The difference is in the midsole foam itself and in the upper. The Evo Speed Goat comes in at 9.3 ounces or 264 grams, where the Speed Goat 4 on the men's comes in at 10.8 ounces. So it's a major difference between the two shoes in terms of weight. On the women's side, it is 8.3 ounces or 235 grams. Another thing that I noticed, remember when I said I didn't I didn't really care for this panel right here on the Speed Goat 4? It is a piece that's been welded on top of this upper and then it becomes the tongue itself. On the Evo Speed Goat, it is actually, lack of a better term, a Lycra base. So it has some stretch in it, a little bit of stretch. Then it comes up and it is st stitched up here at the top and the tongue, which has some a lot of perforations in it for breathability, the, the actual tongue is stitched up here and then brought up. So it's a much different construction, much, but I think is a much better construction. They took this construction and put it on the Speed Goat 4 I think actually I'd be happier. Anyway, got this suggestion from a comment on my review of the Speed Goat 4. And it came from an ultra runner who said, you know what? Wear the Speed Goat 4 for training. Wear the heavy shoe. Get used to the heavy shoe. And then put this on for race day. And so I had to see, buy it and see what he was talking about. I'm not an ultra runner, and I find that funny. I, I can kind of empathize with people who say I'm not a runner. I'm not an ultra runner. I have done 250Ks, I've done a bunch of trail marathons, but I am not an ultra runner. And so me getting ready for a 50 mile to have an ultra runner give me this advice, sure, I'll take that. And it makes some sense. If I'm racing on the roads, I have a race day shoe, and that shoe is only for race day. And I train in everything else. I train in heavy shoes to get my legs feeling heavy and, and also give them some protection through all training. But the whole idea is you put on that race shoe and you feel fast instantly. So I get why he suggested that. I am gonna run in it a little bit just to see and to make sure it works. But the whole plan is to use this during the 50 mile. One other point, Hoka One One is sold out of this shoe, specifically on the men's side. So this is actually the tag on the shoe. It says 10 and a half. I wear a size nine. This is a women's 10 and a half. And I was comfortable buying it because I knew they weren't making a men's version and a women's version. They were simply putting a different tag on the shoe. So this is actually the exact same as a men's size nine, which is my size. All The only difference is the label, which brings a huge topic up. A few days ago, I got a message through one of the forums from a guy asking for, for my help with his wife and her running shoes. He was trying to tell me who she was and what kind of problems she was having with her running shoes and I said, look, I need to hear it in her words. The things that men say about running shoes are completely different than the things that women say about running shoes. You, we can't take a men's comment and apply that to the women's. 
And so I needed to hear what this woman had to say, and it's, it's an, an amazing story that I'm not going to go into full detail on. But if you break, if you pull all the story out and just put the main points together, what are her problems? Heel fit. She struggles to find a shoe that really grabs her heel. That's number one. And number two is many of the shoes are built too high and the, the top of the shoe digs into her Achilles and she doesn't like that. To compensate for poor heel fit, she cranks down on the laces to the point where she's actually caused bruises on the top of her foot. But that's so that she can get the, that heel to fit. And lastly, she needs room in the toe box. That's pretty standard for, for most women. Most women need room in the toe box, okay? Most women don't crank down really tight across the top of the foot, but that's because this woman that I was dealing with is a performance athlete. Performance athletes are all always gonna crank down hard across the top of their foot. That said, heel fit is always an issue with women. It's the number one issue with women. It's the number one reason a woman changes from one brand to the next is because heel fit changed. And one of the problems, and I'm not saying that every shoe is done this way, but one of the major problems in running shoes is that this is a men's shoe. It, it's designed on a, on a last that, is, that fits men really well. This heel counter fits men really well. It's not possible a heel counter that fits men super well is gonna fit women the same way. It's a problem in shoe manufacturing. Brands don't have the total amount of business specifically on the women's side to make that a women's specific. Maybe it's the night, not the right kind of shoe to make a women's specific. I'm not saying that it's a major problem in running shoes because it's been done for decades. What I'm saying is women are always gonna struggle with shoes specifically heel fit because sometimes the brands get it right and sometimes they simply don't. That's it. Let's go running. I was right about the size. The women's ten, ten and a half fit my size nine men's foot just perfect. So I will have to figure out the sock thing. I think this, the socks I ran on the in the first run were just uh, a little bit too hot because it's going to be rather warm in Big Bear come September. So I'm going to have to have some socks that actually move moisture and dry quickly. So that'll be uh, the next step. The Speed Goat Evo or the Evo Speed Goat, uh, I think, is going to be the shoe. It's light. It is soft, kind of a spongy soft. And I think it'll be great for 50 miles going up and down. I will say that I'm estimating that I'm going to get roughly one mile per dollar spent on the shoe. The shoe is $160 and just my knowledge of foam, I don't think this foam is going to last much longer than that. Maybe someone else can tell me that they've gotten a lot more miles out of that. That would be great to know. But right now, I don't think... Uh, it sure doesn't feel like I'm going to get 200 miles out of this shoe. Uh, one other note, and this is something I'm definitely going to do. I can tell that this uh, Ortholite sock liner is going to be a problem. Because as it flattens out, this shoe's going to open up in space and I simply can't have any more space in that upper. It will all of a sudden become way too roomy. So the next time I run in it I am going to find an EVA sock liner that fits in this shoe and works better. I think that's it right now. I think uh, again the, the guy who posted 
comments. Thank you. I think you're right. The Speed Goat 4 is a great training shoe, and I'll keep training in that uh, through the next, whatever, month and a half. But come race day, this is the shoe I'm going to put on. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have questions or comments about this shoe or any other shoe, don't hesitate to put them down there. Have a great run today.